and there you go look if you can see that I'll bring it up to you heat crack in here you get a camera in the right place it's pretty good but sometimes the light aggravates you, yeah? so you can see that. I'll run a video for you now, shall I? Okay, guys and girls, hello and welcome back to... I got a package from Amazon this morning. Okay, so don't you just love Amazon? Quick delivery, and uh, if you deliver it to work, you'll always know that you've got it waiting for your toolbox when you get in in the morning. Yep, so this is what's happened. And what do we have here? We have Teslong Endoscope NTS 300 version, which is uh, 1080p. Big real estate on it. Okay, so this is semi-professional, although they say they're professional. It is actually a good tool. And then through this video, I'm going to show you what I've applied it for in my specific discipline, okay? So here we go, there's a happy, well-paid mechanic on the catalogue, yep, picture of, and there are loads of different probes. I'm not going to talk about it, we're just going to talk about uh, how I've used this. So basically what this is, endoscope, probe, and it's a dual camera, okay, so it has a side camera on it. Now... It can be toggled here with a uh, button, so it's quite simple. And uh, like this one, which uh, has to use a mirror to get a side view, okay? Plugs into a uh, USB socket, okay? So that's uh, universal charging, unlike this ball scope here, which had a uh, UK plug and the earth pin has snapped off, which has rendered it useless at the moment, yeah? So this one has a small screen and the battery's flat because nobody's charged it up. Yep, but uh, usual things, micro SD card and video output, that is just standard on ball scopes. And the same with this, but this has good real estate on the front screen, okay? So uh, you're already getting the idea when you first get one that you have to do yourself a medical inspection, yes. If you know anybody who's just bought an endoscope, they probably snuck off to do a uh, uh, any orifice inspection. Yep, so I need to clean my ears out and... Uh, need to go to the dentist as well yeah shocking not going to show you that generally ball scopes are used or understood that we can stick them down spark plug holes however it can be used for all sorts of different applications now i have an isuzu here which uh, it sometimes have problems drained the diff out after 24,000 miles service this is fairly new you can see the uh, shiny bits floating about in the oil and we have had problems with broken diffs in the past so it's worth on this specific service interval is just to have a quick look at the diff to make sure it's okay not just the bits of metal that fall out of it but yeah generally endoscope if you've got a hole you can push your rod into it can't you guys yep so that's the inlet on this one the daf engine okay and we'll just have a quick inlet uh, check here uh, yeah i'm not going to show you what's in there uh, what i'm going to do is talk about this diagnostics uh, process that i went through and used an endoscope quickly yeah so uh, what i have here is a high voltage or this high voltage supply it was too high now the output of the truck 28.2 on the battery and the same for the uh, lead the iso lead to the trailer okay so that's what we're dealing with with the output with the vehicle running with the vehicle um, standing the battery is actually now starting to lose charge but it's 24 volts 24 5 volts and you look at this it's actually i'm sorry it's a bit blurred but that actually says 26 to 27 and this was just before i actually went to the back of the trailer that was about 25 volts so we do have a little bit of a voltage drop now endoscope what i'm looking for here before i condemn the ecu is just to have a look at the plug situation to make sure there's no corrosion as you can see here already for diagnosis where you can't quite reach into yes okay you can see that can't you that's uh, pretty good plugs all right and i'll just check the other end here to make sure that there's no corrosion in here which is uh, again it's fine so uh, if you have fine like we all do now we have fine uh, plug sockets and such stuff like that it's worth uh, using endoscope to inspect them and of course this one actually has a torch on the end of it 
another ABS fault, or should I say EBS, I don't know why we say ABS these days, because it's all uh, TEBS on trailers, isn't it, yeah, but again, this is a pressure rail sensor, and what I'm looking for here is the numbers, so we can do a diagnostics, or a potential diagnostics on it, pin 1, 2, and 3, of course you don't know unless you look at the manual, but if you look in the plug socket, you can just see there, one on the right, two, and then three, okay, that's numbered, so you can go ahead and take some readings with an oscilloscope if, if needs be, yeah? Okay, so you get the idea. Now, I've been using this for two weeks, and I think if you've been watching my videos, you know that we have to uh, confirm everything we find, okay? Taking a photograph of some brake linings, which is an absolute waste of time. The camera doesn't work very well, and I found this straight away, and of course I hit the ground running, because this is the first job I had when I got this endoscope, was to have a look to see if I could uh, photograph the brake lining thickness, and then give it to the... Uh, relevant authorities so you, you can see them there it's quite low endoscope has come up and it said yeah look at that that's uh, really low yeah like so yeah you can see that as well can't you so uh, take a video or a photograph and send it to the the relevant authorities that then can warrant the work or the payment for the work to be done okay so good stuff already yeah now let's have a look at our favourite friend, the brake chamber and the springs that break in the back. Mm, okay, can't really see them unless you put your finger in, which is not a good idea because I do know a guy who actually uh, trapped his finger in one of those brake chambers and broke it. Yeah, we're using the endoscope here to have a look, which is brilliant. Look at this, you can see in here. Now the quality you see on the video, it's down to the operator and, and how they use it more than the quality of the machine. Because this is uh, 720p, but the machine will record also at 10, uh, 1080 as well and take photographs. So I'm just checking the brake chamber springs, all good on this trailer. However, this one had a noisy brake chamber and, and that's an indication that there's something wrong. And I'll just show you here, I've actually found a broken spring. This one is where the spring's been rubbing and it made a noise and that, if you can see, is the actual breakage. So that's confirmation, okay? And you can see here, <laughs> it's already dirty. After two weeks of work, it's absolutely filthy, but it's a real life test. It has a microphone on it, a SD card, which you get with it straight away. And of course, an ally on battery. Uh, you have a video which is 720 or 1080p, yeah, so uh, you press record, it records, you stop, it stops recording and you can toggle through the different selections, okay, so uh, photographs there, video there, quite simple. It measures out, the probe on this one measures out about 5mm, okay, so anything that's a little bit bigger than 5mm you can shove into. And the side camera works really well, okay, with a light, which is adjustable as well. Now, if you want to measure or view something on the side, like these discs, okay, then you can use the side camera. Again, not brilliant quality, and that's down to my usage. And when the probe gets dirty, which it will do because of the industry we work in, okay, uh, automotive, you can then use it for inspections. Yep, so I'm... Uh, checking these discs out very very carefully usually i use a mirror and that's quite awkward you have to uh, hold a torch and the mirror and turn the wheel whereas this two hands okay one for the camera and one for turning it so you get the idea don't you generally that is pretty good fortunately this is very light sensitive you give it time it focuses okay this lead is actually uh, longer than what I need, but if you find something like a drain you need to push it down into, it is uh, IP67, so it's waterproof, yeah. And the camera lens gets dirty very quickly, so you need to find a way of cleaning it. Okay, so any application, if it's a hole, and you can shove it down, and we had a leaky jerry can here, so that quick look. And uh, this was not serviceable. I was going to repair it, but no, there's so much corrosion in the bottom of that, it's not worth it. So here I have again my favourite axle, which is the BPW Eco 2. You've seen my videos, you know that the uh, spring clips wear out and the brake shoes shift. I'm just looking here, because I have a noisy brake shoe, no, the spring clips are in place and the shoes are sitting on them correctly, as you can see here. So if you've got a hole that you can push your camera into, 
then you can see it, can't you? Yep, so you can see those very clearly, photographs taken, all good. Now, the other thing, corrosion inspections. Now, this uh, on uh, certain torque liners, a steel chassis, the corrosion up here, it's, it creeps in and you don't see it until it's too late, so it, it can be worth its while to have a look and see. And this is, again, straight away already used, yep. So we'll go up there, where we can't usually reach, and of course if you work on pits you'll know this, yeah, you can see whether there's any uh, corrosion. Aluminium chassis here, okay, which is quite common for the rear and the front spring hangers to crack. Okay, we'll have a look and, ooh, <laughs> what have we found? This is what we found, a crack, yep. So again, another use for it. This is working on the side camera, yep. Cracked. Here's another good use, of course, this time I've had to move the backing plate out of the way for the brake drums to have a look at the exciter ring. So you can see that very, very clearly here. I'm looking to see if there are any damaged teeth on it, okay, because we do have a uh, speed dropout on this one. Now, just move that slowly, and as you can see very, very clearly, you can check whether any of the teeth have been damaged yep so that's another good application if it's got a hole in it and you can get the probe in all the better so yeah that was the only time really i had to remove anything to get access okay that was just removing the backing plate and look there we go bubble drives now you know what i use them for so a few years ago guys i did actually own a different endoscope a bore scope and i made a video on it trailer fitters toolbox i'll put a link below to that if you want to go and watch this one this was a uh, yeah a slip timing belt and it bent the valves in our case so the tool i used had a mirror on and we pushed uh, the camera down the spark plug hole and this is the image resolution with a mirror on it not brilliant but it is what it is at the end of the day and don't forget this was over 10 years old so uh, yeah the probe was quite large and we had to use an adapter on it and the image resolution not brilliant snap-on still do video inspection scopes and uh, this is um, 640 by 480 resolution yes it is dual which means it has a side camera on it at about 600 pounds including that or you could get a smaller one from snap-on the dealers are actually uh, promoting these at the moment 188 bk 3000 which 284 or something like a Milwaukee from Screwfix, two seven nine ninety nine, or uh, other ones here. Rothenberger even do one at one hundred seventy nine pounds. Not brilliant, and they have small screens and very low resolutions. This is different, guys. This is ten eighty. Okay, so this is ten eighty side camera and a very reasonable price of one hundred seventy three pounds off of Amazon. So where are you going to go and buy one? It does have a, a light feel, a little bit of a cheap DIY feel to it, but it works. That's the thing. So if you're careful with this, it will last a while. And it has something like a four-hour battery life. So I've only charged it once in the last two weeks. And I was very impressed with this because not only has it upped my game, it's actually made things easier. So I can actually show customers or administration uh, pictures of corrosion and damage. And it works to make my job quicker. So if you want one, there'll be a link below. Think about it now. There are plenty on the market, but this is a Brahma. <laughs> As my parents used to say, it's a, it's a good piece of equipment if you can find a use for it. And of course, there's always the DIY stuff as well that you can do at home, isn't there? Anyway, guys, cheers. See you later.